we were, when I did my grit and groove thing, uh, <clears throat> he came down and played it. And uh, <laughs> so he shows up, right? And it's just him and a drummer. And I never had seen him. And so I go, Tony Chose. And he says, oh, this is my drummer. This is Fleetwood. <laughs> and I said, nice to meet you, Fleetwood. I said, how did y'all meet? They both started laughing. And Tony Joe says, oh, I, I went to the asylum where he was at and I checked him out for the weekend and we never been back. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get to know Tony Joe White? Uh, well, I was up in Red River, New Mexico with uh, Three Faces West and all of a sudden somebody came through and said that this guy Tony Joe White was playing at Castle Creek on a Wednesday night. So I called up Rod Kennedy and I said, hey man, because I'd heard Pogue Salad Annie had just come out that summer, just, you know, I hadn't even written up the charts yet. It was just, I'd heard it somewhere. I said, can I open for Tony Joe White? And he said, sure, it was on a Wednesday night. So we played, uh, uh, so there was a kid that Rick Wayne didn't want to go, but so there was a kid, uh, Somebody said, there's a kid down at the Pizza Hut down there at the Pizza Place. He plays guitar. So I said, man, if I, you know, I need you know, have a guitar player with me. So I went down there, and I looked in. There's a kid back there washing dishes, smoking a cigarette and everything. I said, hey, I hear you play guitar. And he goes, yeah. And I said, you want to go to Austin Wednesday and open the show for Tony Joe White? And he goes, no, I think I'd rather do this. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> and, I said, oh, and, and then I realized he was kidding. And he <laughs> took off his apron and threw it down. I said, oh. Never coming back, and that was uh, that's Terry Ware. So Terry Ware and I, we oh, left. No kidding. Yeah, we we left the gig and drove all night. And got down to um, Austin and went in Castle Creek. Got there about I don't know three or four in the afternoon and met Tony Joe. And we just just hit it off. He was so nice and everything. And then we hung out with him. And after the gig, then we drove back. Left there Austin about two in the morning. Drove back. Got to Red River about. I don't know, seven o'clock, and I walked on stage that night, and here I am. <laughs> it was the deal. So we met. We just always stayed in, in touch. He was just a, a gracious guy. Yeah. He, man, the one chord master. He could, yeah. He he had that. He, he you know, just he was a gr just monotonous or hypnotic. Yeah, not he, monotonous, hypnotic. Some of that stuff he did was just. Uh, I just loved it to death, and he was so. It was a lot of fun. He was, he pro produced my first session. Uh, he I'd written some songs up there, and he wanted to come to Memphis. So we drove to Memphis, and we went to Sun Studio. Actually, had uh, Duck Dunn on bass, and wow. I think Leo LeBlanc on steel, and uh, God, I can't remember. So we we did like three, four little songs, just did demo, and <clears throat> he was uh, he was just great cat, man. He just always was. Really nice to me, you know. When we did, when I did Mother Blues, yeah. right? So I, I do that two lines in there, like you know, oh, yeah. the, the lady said, whenever I hear Pokes Head Lanny, I just won't take off my clothes, dance around my underwear. I go down in Louisiana yeah. where the alligators grow to me. So I use those two lines, right? I sent him the song. He said, "Oh, I love that. That's good. That's funny, Albert. That's funny." And so we were getting ready to put the record out. It was like. Uh, Friday and the record was coming out on Tuesday and we so we said well we need to make sure this is legal because somebody so Judy uh, uh, wrote an uh, email to EMI and said hey we use these two lines from Tony Joe White's poke salad Annie uh, down in Louisiana where the alligators grow some meat we want you know we want to do that they sent her about it back a text that says okay we'll let you have use it for five thousand dollars and 66 and two-thirds percentage of the publishing no on way Mother brothers blues so judy wrote them back a a love letter yeah uh you know of, of, <laughs> of you sorts know, i can't exactly say what she said but it was very short she goes you know and ah, we'll bleep it <laughs> so i called tony joe and i said uh hey man emi wants uh five thousand bucks in a person in the publishing on this song he goes oh man those guys said i don't have that publishing anymore i sold it but let me call them so anyhow we got an email monday said you can use it for free no obligation anything and i said call, call tony joe and i said whatever he said oh i'll call them old boys and i reasoned with them I said i wasn't going to write any more songs for them if they didn't let you have it for nothing wow and so uh, he was just that he was like jerry jeff he, he 
you know, really loved songwriters and musicians. You know, he that that was what was important to me. Yeah. So yeah, that's what he. Uh, we were, when I did my grit and groove thing, uh, <clears throat> he came down and played it, and uh, <laughs> so he shows up right, and it's just him and a drummer. He was the first guy that actually started doing that before the White Stripes and Black Keys. Right. So he shows up with this this drummer. And I never had seen him, and so I go, Tony Chose. And he says, oh, this is my drummer. This is Fleetwood. <laughs> and I said, nice to meet you, Fleetwood. I said, how did y'all meet? They both started laughing. And Tony Joe says, oh, I, I went to the asylum where he was at, and I checked him out for the weekend, and we never been back. <laughs> 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 this is my buddy Fleetwood. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, in an institution and I oh, checked him out for the week. <laughs> He'd never been back. <laughs> you know, he was in he but uh yeah, he, he was he was